back. Come on, open the door. This is hello, guys. TV. Welcome back to my channel. If you're here for the first time, this is Stevie Tiwa, and what I talk about here is about lifestyle, about traveling, about my interesting places where I've been, food, and I actually talk about migration how migration can actually make us be better persons. You know, traveling is part of education. So when we come in from Africa with the good values of Africa and we bring it here to combine it with the good values here, it's going to make us be a better person. You know, I believe that we shouldn't abandon our culture and our tradition and we should look at the good sides of anywhere we live and join it with what we have. So it's going to make us be better persons, right? So I talk about that too on this channel. People send me mails and I talk about it generally. So today, guys, I'm going to talk about my Las Vegas trip. There's something I didn't show you and I want to show you today before I delete it right from my phone. Um, I met this man in Las Vegas at the Westgate Hotels and he told me some things about Africa. This one is particularly for my American friends. If you intend to go to Africa, he mentioned places where you should go and why you should go there and his own experience as he celebrated 45 years on planet Earth in this part of Africa. So let's see him and I'll be back. This young man from America has been eight times in Nigeria, 11 yeah. different states starting from Lagos to Kano to Kaduna to Josh to Zaria, even to Benin. Wow! This American man based in Europe in London that's flying Nigerian Airways to Lagos about six different times. And one of the first things when you're accepted in Nigeria and you eat with a Nigerian family, on the floor with the paper and the food in front of you, you learn how to eat your fufu with your hands. <laughs> you take your hands, you roll your rice up, your potatoes, your vegetables, all that, and you slip it in your mouth. Oh one of God. the greatest dishes ever produced in the world is a thing called suya. It is a flattened meat with all the peppers or what have you, with Star Beer, one of the best beers in the world. You just don't know about that in America. So all Americans, especially black Americans, I suggest, highly suggest that you take a trip to Nigeria, to the real motherland. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much and have a wonderful life. Your name, sir? Chief. Da Chief D. <laughs> Did you get your name in Nigeria? Odabo. <laughs> So I know about the Yoruba, the houses, the Ibus. I know about the tribal scars. They're oh. not scars. They're an initiation as a man into oh. the tribe in Nigeria. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy. I'm going to come back here because of we you. We would love to have you back. Yeah, I hope you still be here. So this then. is a brother that has traveled the world yeah. three times. So what can you say about Nigeria? You think Nigeria most is Most wonderful so people along with the Ghanaians, some of the most wonderful people that I've ever met in my life. Oh. If you want to feel like a king or a queen, go to Nigeria or Ghana immediately. <laughs> so they invited me to their home for dinner for my birthday. I didn't know where I was going. When I got there, these were three one-room huts for each family, even they had children. That's all they had. One family made the uh, rice and the vegetables. The other family contributed the meat. And then the other family to, to, to contributed one small cake with a counter on it. These families had nothing. If I tell you they had nothing, they had nothing, but they had everything. So I spent my 45th birthday in Kaduna, in the jungle, with three very, very poor families. And I'm so proud to say that because it was the best birthday I ever had in my life. And let me tell you why. Not only did they invite me, they didn't have much to give, but they gave what they could give, yeah. right? And it was so appreciated by me. Yeah. Before I left there, I gave them all the leftover hair products that I have for the family. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing that I did. I gave each one of those families 500 Naira a piece. Ah. That was no money for me. Yeah, but that was a lot no, of No, it was a lot for them. Yeah. But it's I had it anyway. So what am I gonna do? Just throw it away or give it to somebody in Lagos that doesn't need it? No. no, I gave it to them. Yeah. It was the birthday, best birthday I ever had in my life till today. Thank you. That is a fact. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I was just laughing all through the interview because I was so surprised. I was so I was not expecting him to know anything about my language, about my country, and you know. Traveling is part of education, honestly. I was so surprised and I actually enjoyed my time with that man, Chief D. Okay, Chief D, thank you so much for that interview. We really appreciate you. Okay, so this takes me to the next mail I got. Hmm. Talking about Nigeria. We are kind people. We are loving people. 
But right here in the diaspora, especially here in the U.S., somebody sent me a mail and he was lamenting that Nigerians don't help each other here and that this OYO thing or your, or your lower on your own that we used to say in Nigeria, that we say in Nigeria is happening here. People don't care about one another. You know, let me just quickly read the mail. It says, hi, lady. How are you? And hope you're okay. Yes, I'm okay. I'm your new subscriber. Thank you. Somehow, I just love your channel and I am enjoying what you're doing. Thank you so much. Please, madam, I have just two questions to ask you. Do Nigerians really love each other? Are we really who we say we are? I have met with some Niger people here in Maryland and honestly, I've come to realize something. That's what we use in Niger, OYO, on your own. It is really true and very clear here. I've had situations of fellow Nigerians make a mockery of each other. No one wants to assist you. Everyone seems to be on their own. It's so sad. Some actually think that here is the end to life. Hmm. What do you, you said something guys? here. You said the on your own thing. When you talk about being on your own, here is not, you know, we are strangers here. We are visitors here. And because of that, a lot of Nigerians mind their business because they don't want to have bad records. They don't want to mingle with those that they do not really know or understand. So because of that, they are careful. Then the hustle and bustle of life in the diaspora is different from the hustle and bustle of life back home. Here, um, people need to settle so many things. You have so many bills to pay, so many things to do back home. You have lots of commitments. So because of that, you might think, so because of that, people work. They go to work, and when you need their help, maybe they're at work, you know, struggling to make ends meet. So I, I think, to an extent, for me, I have been helped by Nigerians in this country. I have to be truthful and I have friends who are not from my tribe and they have been very helpful to me. So also I've, I have, I had friends who are from my tribe and they were like, so it's, it's, it's just like that. That's how life is. My own advice is this, and actually I would like for you guys to drop some comments for him. What I, I think you should do is just change your group of friends. Change your group of friends, or maybe God wants you to leave the city where you live in. Change your group of friends. Go to Nigerian churches. Because if you are talking about not mingling with your Niger people, you said uh, they are making a mockery of somebody. Who does not do that? Even your Igbos, they do that. They gossip. People gossip all over the world. It's no big deal. What ability to look at them and just forget and realize that they are human beings. Human beings do that. So don't focus your, your energy on that. Change your group of friends and find else some other places to go to. There are so many states in the country. Go to another state. You'll find your own. And apart from that, pray. You know, prayer can change things. So pray about it. Then there's this thing that, you, that made me laugh when I first read it. It says some actually think that here is the end to life. They are, they are pompous. They are proud. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I know some people, once they move to the Western world, they just don't want to have anything to do with anybody back home. Or they don't even want to have anything to do with Nigerians here. I don't belong to that school of thoughts. Because I know one thing is you cannot forget your source. You cannot forget your origin. Hmm. You're about to say that, Oh, do you be a Some people... Come here with their children, and they, those children cannot even speak their native language anymore. These children will talk to you anyhow, they misbehave, and this, these people want to hide under the freedom influence of the Western world. Be forgetting that one day, one day, you'll go back home. Apart from going back home, what does the Bible say about honor? The Bible says that honor your father and your mother. So that what? For the gift of long life. And it's not only your father and mother like we were told when we were young. Anybody that is older than you. But these days, when you meet some African, Nigerian children here, you, Emma, for what would you? You feel like, eh? Sure, well, I won't lay by. Because I don't know why you leave 
your continent and you come here and imbibe other culture and forgetting your own just because of what? Because of survivor? So, I understand that angle. But just don't mind them. Ignore them. Ignore them and just face your life. Face your life and meet those who are ready to help and assist you. That's the thing. And I also want to encourage us Nigerians, please. Not only Nigerians, other Africans. Please. That is your language. That's your culture. Don't abandon it. God placed us in places where he knows that we belong. For us migrating to the Western world, we are migrating for many reasons. And doesn't mean that we are coming here to stay. It might be short, short time. It might be for a long time. But one day, one day, we will have to go back home. When you go back home, what do you go there to face? That's the thing. Please, let's just for, remember that we need to be humble. Anywhere we are, we should be humble. How you lay? It depends on how you take this life. It's so easy. And I always help people. When you help somebody, you are not helping that person. You are helping yourself. Because what you give is what you get. So if you are helping somebody, if you are helping A, you are going to get it. It might not be from A, it might be from D. So I don't know why people, some people think, what about today B? Some will even tell you, they don't even, once they see Nigeria called, they just cut it. They just, for what? If you see calls from Nigeria, you just cut it. Why? Because you think they want to ask something from you? What if they want to ask for something else? Or they want to tell you something that will be of benefit to you? So, that's it. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you in my next video.